Hi, my name is Paul Grogan and welcome to a very special Gaming Rules podcast. In this episode, you're going to hear nothing about the games that I've been playing, no interview with any special guest and no competition. So thanks very much for listening and I'll see you all next time. No, wait a minute, keep listening because this is the pre-Essen show. In a few days time, it's the start of Essen Spiel, the biggest event for the board gaming hobby and hundreds of new games coming out. I've been too busy over the last few weeks to even look at any of the lists myself of what's coming out, so I've absolutely no idea. So therefore, in this episode, you're not going to hear from me and my top picks. What you're going to hear from is lots of other people calling in who've sent me their audio clips with what their games are that they're looking forward to. And since I got hundreds of emails last time saying how much they enjoyed Efka being on the show, well, OK, I got one, um, he's joining me again this time. So hello again, Efka. Hi, I'm back. Back again. <laughs> yes, I'm back again. I broke more records. So, first of all, uh, I'm the first person to be on twice in a row on your podcast. Okay. I am I am the first person to be a co-host twice in a row on your podcast. I am also the first person to be three times in total. No, sorry, four times in total four on times. your podcast. Four times in total. I'm, I'm breaking all kinds of records. Excellent, excellent. Right, yeah. so here's how this podcast is going to work. Um, I've been sent uh, a number of audio clips from various people. We're going to both listen to that audio clip, uh, hear what their game choices are, and then we're just going to basically talk about it. And, uh, you know, if we agree with them, say how brilliant they are. If we don't agree with them, just tell them how rubbish they are, basically. So Yeah. Okay, you ready for the first one? I am very ready. Okay, let's go. Hi, this is Mark from Aircon. The two games from Essen that I'm most looking forward to are Fields of Green, because Among the Stars are the cool theme, and Cottage Garden, because Tetris with vegetables. Right, so Fields of Green and Cottage Garden. Fields of Green is Among the Stars, but with the farming theme? Is yeah. It, is there any difference? Well, I I, I imagine it's uh, it's a bit more streamlined and uh, some design... Up at least that's what I hear. Some design updates have gone in. It's quite funny because Among the Stars itself was kind of like Seven Wonders. Yeah. Redone. And now Among the Stars is redone by the same designer that did seven, um, Sorry, Among the Stars into Fields of Green. So right. you, you're, we're seeing kind of an evolution of, of a game. The same way that we saw with 51st Aid... Uh, being yes. a, a thing of uh, Race for the Galaxy and now Imperial Setless and now 51st State Master Set. Similar okay. kind of thing going on, I think. Okay, Cottage Garden, Rosenberg. Yeah, so this is patchwork for more players. Right. And is it more than that or is, is that it? Is uh, it? It looks a little bit different. Of course, it has a different theme. It's not quilts, it's gardens. Yes. And it looks like the gameplay is slightly different. But, but the core concept, I believe, is the same, okay. except that it does allow for more people to play. And since Patchwork was one of the big hits and really popular, it's kind of not surprising they've done a multiplayer version. I know that a lot of people are really excited about this. Yeah. Right, okay, let's get on with the next one. Hello chap, it's Barry here. The two games I'm looking forward to playing this year at Essen are Chatterbox, where I just stand around and talk to anyone about anything, and Paul Grogan's Happy Hour. This is where I stop Paul from working for a complete hour. Right. Well, so. good luck with <laughs> stopping Paul Grogan from working. I've tried, like, a lot. It doesn't, it, it just doesn't happen. I very much recommend the first game, though. Barry is a great chap. We've got to know each other over the last 12 months. And, uh, yes, if you do bump into Barry, then feel free to join him in a game of uh, Chatterbox. And, yes, I wish him the best of luck with his, with his second game as well. Right, <laughs> on with the third clip. I am Bez. I'm really excited to be demoing my game in a bind, a silly physical game. I'm also looking forward to playing blank white dice, drawing on dice, and fold it, folding some cloth to reveal pictures. Right, so I'm glad Bez has called in, because Bez, um, I mean, he, he's a game designer himself, and as he mentions, he's got his own game coming out. The two things that we've had from him, now blank white dice I have had a bit of a look at, and I have to say it looks like a good idea but not carried out well. I did watch Tom Vassell's video on it this morning, and mm. it doesn't look that that good. You basically you you have these dice, sort of Dominion, but with dice, and you draw on the dice. But oh, you do draw on them. That's neat. You draw on the dice, which sounds like it's a cool idea. Unfortunately, it's it's wet markers only, so you've got to have a wet cloth, and you have to keep rubbing them off, and it just gets messy, and it doesn't doesn't really work. So nice idea, but I think it it's not been carried out. 
Oh, know, that's as a well shame. as it could have been. Not that not there's any other way of carrying out, but it's it's just tricky. The other mm. one, fold it, 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 it looks interesting. Basically, you have this uh, you have this sheet of paper with all of these symbols. I think it's like a four by four grid of symbols. And then you'll draw a card off the top of this deck, and it will have a certain number of symbols on. And then what every player has got to do is they've got to fold their mat up so that only the symbols that are on the card are showing. That's basically how the game plays. So it's kind of a, a kids type game, but it, it's it's nice. I'd not seen anything like that before. Um, so that's the two games from Bez. You want to know what great games to get at Essen? Then I recommend Gooseberry by La Mem Games and They Who Rate by Ludi Creations. Also, listen to the Perfect Information Podcast. Was that manly enough? <laughs> well, it was nice of Ben to bake in an advert for himself, I will say that. Yeah. I did give him permission to do so, so that's okay. Okay, okay. Just so, saying. Gooseberry, do you know anything about this? Yeah, I looked up Gooseberry, and it seems to be a variant of uh, Fake Artist and Spyfall. Uh, okay. Uh, it, and you're trying to find who the Gooseberry is? Right. Uh, and I, th- I think it's based on topics... And uh, everyone gives their answer at the same time. So if you ever played Spyfall, you know, there's, there's a lot of question asking. You ask one person a question, they answer. Whereas here, everyone kind of just gives an answer at the same time. So I, I, I feel like that is the major difference. Okay. And they who were eight, I don't, I know a bit about because I helped out with the with the rule book for this game. Oh, okay. Um, it's a print and play game from 2013. But has now been picked up by Ludi Creations, who've obviously taken it on board and actually producing it properly. And yeah, I got involved in uh, in, in writing the rule book for it. So it's um, it's a fairly simple. I think the rules are like six pages or something like that. It's fairly simple, but the way that the gameplay works is fairly clever. From mm. what I remember doing the rules, it was months ago. So yeah. Hey Paul, this is Brandon from the What Did You Play This Week podcast. And my two games that I'm looking forward to at Essen, eh, they're pretty easy. I'm looking forward to Hanshu, and I'm looking forward to Flamme Rouge. And I'm probably butchered both names, but I hope you get the point. Enjoy Essen. So I've not heard of Honshu, but I have heard of Flamme Rouge, because I've seen some pictures on social media of that in the last few days. So I don't know if that's just come out. Uh, well, both games are from Lauter Pellet, uh, which right. is the Finnish publisher that is known for Nations Eclipse. and Eclipse. Yep. Uh, it seems a much simpler game than Nations and Eclipse. It's, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's basically trick-taking with tile placement. Okay. That, that's how I would describe it. I think that's its unique selling point. Okay. And Flamme Rouge? It's about cycling with yeah. little cyclist miniatures. And it's, it seems to be a racing game. And uh, you're trying to get things like you're trying to drift behind so you catch up speed and... Uh, You know, all the excitement of a bicycle. All right, my name is Josh, and we're calling in from War Room Studio B, the Brawling Brothers Board Gaming Podcast. I'm here with my compadre. Hey, hey, I'm Brandon, and you're monopolizing the time. I'm here to tell people my most anticipated games of Essen. Josh, you ready? The Great Western Trails from oh. uh, Stronghold Games, Alexander Fister. Also, A Feast for Odin. What do you got, Josh? Well, one of my favorite PC games of all time, Master of Orion, remade into a board game, is my most anticipated game, followed by one of my other favorite games, Seven Wonders Duel, the Pantheon Expansion. Thank you, Paul Grogan, for inviting us, and check us out at brawlingbrothers.com. Josh saying goodbye. Out. Okay, so first one in for Great Western Trail. I'm expecting to hear lots of these over the course of this podcast. Um, Heavy Euro or medium to heavy Euro from Alexander Pfister, designed my joint favourite game of last year, Mombasa, also known for Isle of Sky, oh my goods, various other games, one of the hot names at the moment. So uh, yeah, Great Western Trail is looking really good. Oh, it's not just a hot name, it's you hear Alexander Pfister and your heart sings now. Yeah, <laughs> and Feast Rodin, the other one which I'm also expecting to hear a lot of, the new big game from Uwe Rosenberg that's a combination of uh, Fields of Val... Patchwork, Caverna, all rolled into one. Um, and that's been in development for two or three years, I think. And so, it's his uh, biggest box as well. It's his biggest box. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're definitely coming home with a copy of that in, in our group. Master of Orion, I have I know a little bit about it. Have you played um, the PC game? Yes. Yeah, so you're, you're, you're an old school PC gamer then. I am, yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
yeah, Moo 2, one of the best computer games of all time. Moo 3, uh, Moo 3 is up there with Highlander 2 and um, Star Trek 5. It should <laughs> never have happened. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I, I don't know much about the game apart from one comment that somebody made is that this has not got the depth of the Master of Orion computer game. Oh, this no. is a game that's loosely based on it and is set in the same universe, but it isn't. Don't expect this eight hour big epic civilization game. No, but what I, ca- I can tell you what to expect. I can tell you to expect something like 51st State or Race okay. for the Galaxy. That's right. what I would expect from that game. Okay. And the Seven Wonders Duel expansion is Josh's other choice. Now, Seven Wonders Duel was another massively uh, popular game from last year. So, um, yeah, uh, friends of mine that like that, definitely going to be picking up the expansion for that. This is Frominator. My top two picks for Essen are A Feast for Odin by Spiel and Lorenzo Il Magnifico by Cranio Creations. Okay, so another vote in for Feast for Odin. Well, not a vote, but, you know, another, another choice for Feast for Odin. And what about this other one? I've not heard of this. Uh, Lorenzo Il Magnifico comes from uh, almost the same team that designed Grand Austria Hotel, ah, plus okay. one other designer. Um, and it looks to be like it has dice drafting as well. So right. along similar lines, I'm hearing very good things about it. Sort of uh, uh, probably going to be the underdog heavier, not heavy, but heavier Euro of Spiel, I feel. Yeah. Okay. So definitely keep an eye. If you like Simone Luciani and Grand Austria Hotel and things like that, definitely, uh, definitely keep an eye out on that one. Absolutely. Hi, I'm Brian Hunt, and my top two for Spiel 16 are Great Western Trail by Alexander Pfister and The Oracle of Delphi by Stefan Felt. Uh, I'm a big fan of Heavy Euro, and those are two of my favourite designers. So, this is the first one for The Oracle of Delphi, which is yeah. the big Stefan Felt release. This is probably the most uh, popular game of Essen Spiel this year, I feel. I even- think so. I, I, th- I think most people are excited about this just because of the name of Stefan Feld. Most people just hear the name. Like Rado said, I haven't even read the rules. I don't I don't care. It's, yeah. you know, Stefan Feld. I'm getting it, right? Yeah. And I feel the exact same way about it. Yeah, me too. That's, that's, that's probably my number one. If, if I was to pick at the moment, which game would I definitely be coming back with, uh, apart from my copy of Gloomhaven, but that's something different, um, is, is Oracle of Delphi from, from Stefan Feld. Right, on with the next one. Hi Paul, Chewy here. Games at Essen, I am looking forward to trying. Uh, Perfumer, which is a novel scratch and sniff Euro, as well as Last Friday, nice twist on Letters from Whitechapel. Great show. Did I hear that right? Scratch and sniff? Yeah, scratch and sniff. So, <laughs> uh, I, I've, I've seen, uh, have you seen Rado's uh, run through of Perfumer? I haven't, uh, no. No, it, it seems to be a very light pickup and delivery game with okay. the scratch and sniff thing. Apparently, what the publisher is really proud of is the printing method that they used, and uh, the scratch and sniff cards are highly reusable. But really, it's just a simple gateway pickup and delivery game with some nice sense built into it. Right, okay. And last Friday? Well, see, this combines two things I don't like. A, slasher flicks, just not my thing, aside from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, mm-hmm. and uh, hidden movement. So uh, the difference between this, so basically you are teenagers in a summer camp or wherever, and there's a slasher, you know, he's trying to kill you. So first he's chasing you, then you're chasing him, then he dies, then he comes back, and then he's chasing you again. And there are different phases in which, you know, the hunter become the hunted, etc., etc. It looks fun for those people who enjoy hidden movement games. I don't. Right. Okay. Hi, it's Chris from Board Game Trading and Chat UK on Facebook. The two games I'm looking out for at Essen are Key to the City, London, and Soul of Fide, The Reformation. Have a good one. Right, so Key to the City of London, Richard Breeze's new key game, um, which is out at Essen this year and does look nice. Now, when I first heard about this game, I basically heard it was Key Flower Light, but since then... I think a lot of people have been saying it isn't just Keyflower Light. It's got some elements from Keyflower in it, but it does stand on its own as a, as a game. Um, Solar Fide is one of the ones that um, Stephen Bonacle, when I had him on the show a couple of, uh, couple of episodes ago, yes. was talking about. And this one is getting a lot of... Um, it does seem to be growing in popularity. It seems to be well, really popular. It is from the designers of Twilight Struggle. 
Yes. So, and it's supposed to be the new Twilight Struggle game, uh, except okay. it's set in the Reformation area. Um, I feel like that's going to excite people a lot. Right. So, I mean, Stronghold games have got a very uh, popular catalogue this year. I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's probably their strongest offering at Essen since, since Stronghold games started, based on the number, not just the number of games they've got coming out, but what appear to be good quality games that are coming out as well, and something for everybody. So, uh, yeah, Solar Fide, definitely one to, to keep an eye on. Hey, Paul, Chris Dickinson from the Game Center and the Kickstarter Cabal. My two Essen picks are Not Alone by Geek Attitude Games. I've been following it now for some time, and I'm really looking forward to upgrading my print-and-play copy. My other pick is Pixie Queen from Game Brewer, which is currently funding on Kickstarter. See you next week. Not Alone is a game I am receiving a review copy of, hopefully tomorrow, the day after okay. tomorrow. And we're going to be looking at it at uh, the podcast that I'm doing with John Perkins and John Cox. Um, it's a light card game uh, that basically is one versus many. You have a big bad uh, chasing humans and it seems to be space themed. I don't know much more about it beyond that, but it's about 30 minutes long, light card game, but one versus many asymmetric deal kind of thing going on. Right. Um, the other game, Pixie Queen, is a worker placement game. And I think the couple of things that set it apart is its unique theme. I mean, it, there's literally a phase that says uh, feeding in, like, uh, feeding the pixies, but in Truro, you know? <laughs> I, or something like that. And and then, of course, you don't score any points because why would you score points? You only score negative points. So the only thing you can do is try to not score points in the game. Okay. Now, from what Chris is saying, that this is not actually available to buy test and this is... This is on Kickstarter at the moment. I think yes. he's just it's going to be on show at Essen, so he's going there to, to have a look at it. Yeah, you can get a demo of it, I believe. Gotcha. Excellent. Right, next one. Hi, this is Christian from Denmark. I'm looking forward to The Fog of War by Jeff Engelstein in Stronghold Games. Looks like an awesome two-player experience. And the new version of Robinson Crusoe by Portal Games. I didn't play the original, but this new shiny version seemed like the perfect place to jump in. So yeah, Fog of War, another one of Stronghold Games' offerings this year. Two-player uh, two player game from the Engelstein team. Which it's a war does game. look interesting. It's a war game, but it's... Uh, I mean, it's called The Fog of War, and from what I know about the mechanics is... It, it, the mechanics do represent what actually happens in the, you know, players cannot see. Comparing to Twilight Struggle, where obviously you can't see the cards in the other player's hand, but the board is all open, you see exactly what counters are on it. With Fog of War, I think you, you don't have all of the information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I, I believe you have to prepare missions and, you know, you have to prepare them in ahead of time and you might not want to do things anymore that you were going to do. Uh, okay. It sounds interesting. I don't know. Yeah, it's definitely on my list to have a look at because when Stephen was talking about it, I was like, that didn't sound my kind of thing at all until Stephen started talking about it. And mm -hmm. obviously he's got, he's got mind control rays that work all the way from yep. America. And I was like, oh, that sounds quite interesting, that. And Robinson Crusoe. Um, well, you know an lot about that, don't you? Regular listeners to the show know that I've, I've had a lot to do with the new version of Robinson Crusoe. So I'm, I'm very eager to see it because blood, sweat and tears did go into, uh, into production of the rule book and checking all of the card text for that game. So yeah, I am I'm, looking I'm, forward to licking all that blood, sweat and tears from my board. <laughs> Mm. Excellent. Right, moving on to the next one. Hi, this is Craig Johnson, Craigus69 of Board Game Geek. I'm going to go for Solarius Mission and Key to the City London, but also honourable mentions to Inish, uh, Perfect Crime, because the company's based in Cornwall where I live, and Oracle of Delphi because, well, it's felt and he's amazing. Okay, so Solarius Mission. You've looked into this, I believe? Yeah, so these are uh, the designers of... Uh, oh my god, I forgot the name. La Granja! Uh, they ah. are the, yeah, it's the new game from the designers of La Granja. Oh, and of course, I know this game. You Do you? I, I interviewed the designer. When <laughs> I remember now. <laughs> so long ago. He was telling me about it by then. Yeah, so, yeah, it's, so it's Andreas Oderhal and one of the three Michael Kellers. Fantastic. Um, yes. And it's got a Golden Age space theme. For a, for a Euro, thematically, it looks very, very pretty. Right. And I quite like the 
odd style of golden age sci-fi i don't know there's yeah. something quite funky about it so i am looking forward to it yeah i to be honest i completely forgot about this one um but when when i was speaking to oda about it you know months and months ago now mm. if not longer i can't remember but it sounded really interesting then i thought oh yeah must keep an eye out for that and of course i've dropped the ball on it so uh thank you craig for for mentioning that one i'll, I'll definitely be looking into that one and uh, and key to the city of london again gets another mention this is Daniel Newman, and the games I'm most excited about are The Oracle of Delphi by Stefan Feld and Great Western Trail from Alexander Pfister. Oh, and the Targi expansion. And the Alchemist expansion. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll stop there. Well, no surprise there. We've got <laughs> uh, The Oracle of Delphi and Great Western Trail. To yeah. be honest, I'm excited about those two as well, so yeah, you I mean, can't blame him. Daniel's a big Feld fan. Um, oh, there so you go. I was, I was expecting that one to be up there, but yeah, good choices there. Hi. David Mortimer here. I'm looking forward to picking up The Perfumer, a game where you have to sniff out the cards, published by Taiwan Board Game Studio, and Hit the Z Road by Martin Wallace, published by Space Cowboys. So there's another one in for The Perfumer. Mm -hmm. So it gets a second mention. Um, and it's Hit Z Road, not Hit the Z Road. No, but um, it had multiple titles before that. And well, it had Route 666. Yes. When uh, I worked on it, it was Route 666. I, I think it had another title before that as well. Did it? Oh, right. uh, I'm, okay. not, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm cuddling something up. Okay. Uh, that's not a word. Anyway, uh, yeah, Hit Z Road looks like a fairly light game, but I've Martin Martin Wallace is on fire this year. So many new releases, and uh, and you've very got... different as well. I've, yeah, I, very I mean, different. I've worked on uh, two Martin Wallace games in the last six months. I did the rulebook for Via Nebula and also for Hit Z Road, and I have to say that my um, appreciation for Martin has, has increased because he's he's a lot he's he's very versatile now. Uh, Wallace fans will probably already say, well, of course he's versatile, but you know I know Wallace for designing a certain kind of game, and yeah. having seen these games, I'm like, oh yeah, okay, he's he's definitely got he can branch out and he can do all sorts of different things. So yeah, it, it's it's a quite a light zombie game um, published by Space Cowboys, which is why I worked on the rulebook. And I have to say that the production quality of the game was really good. Um, it's got bottle caps in it, doesn't it? It's got bottle caps, but it's 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 just really, really nicely done. Um, so yeah, it, it's a fairly light zombie game with a little bit of bidding in it. Um, but yeah, production quality is really good. This is Eric Buscemi, and I'm most excited about Colony from Bezier Games, as I enjoy their earlier building titles Suburbia and the Castles of Mad King Ludwig and also Peak Oil from Two Tomatoes, as a design from Heiko Gunther looks so interesting and different. Colony from Bezier Games. Now, it's supposed to be part of a trilogy with Suburbia, Castles of Mad King Ludwig, and Colony, except that Suburbia and Castles are very similar games, and mm -hmm. Colony is nothing like them. In <laughs> fact, it is it has more akin to something like Machi Koro, where right. you do a lot of dice rolling, and then you spend the values on the dice to pick up certain cards and there's an engine building element where the more cards you've got the more dice you can utilize uh that's it really that's all i've got to say about it okay it does look really nice mm -hmm. now two tomatoes is a company that i've not heard of before the spiel but i am going to keep a very close eye on them because they are publishing some very interesting titles and peak oil is one of them i'm not sure that peak oil will be ready at spiel from what i've heard it's not but maybe okay. i'm mistaken uh but peak oil is a print and player game that was around for a while on bdg that got picked up by two tomatoes just because of its popularity and how people were involved with it but it, it is effectively a game about uh being oil miners effectively and peak oil is the term when basically we run out of oil and there's nothing left and what do yeah. you do right and uh friend of the show gil hover designer of the networks he's involved in this one as well because i think he's co-publishing it with them they're sharing um, a booth together at spiel they I are believe. sharing a booth at spiel yeah. so if you go along and see uh, gil you'll be you'll be able to see this uh, this as well i'm looking forward to seeing gil hi my name is not paul grogan but grelamo2 on twitter and in this segment i'd like to tell you my two games for essen are a feast of odin and an oracle of delphi i can't wait to play them well two good choices there yeah big surprises uh let's move on yep 
Hi, Ferdinand the Garbage Sacker here. The two games I'm looking forward to Essen this year are Revenge of the Dictators, which is about dictators and vacation, and Riso no Nato, a card game about fermented soybeans. Uh, Revenge of the Dictators? Is that what uh, it's called? Sorry. Yeah, I've never heard of either of these games. But uh, I, I've heard I of one of them, quickly. actually. Okay. So, uh, the first one I haven't heard of, I had to look it up, and it seems to be a fairly light game in the style of Ticket to Ride. Not exactly quite like Ticket to Ride, but you're basically covering a map of America and you have to go to certain places. And the free actions you have available is play a card, draw a card, or move somewhere. So, okay. uh, it looks like... The appeal of that game is mostly going to be humor and components because your character sheet effectively is your dictator password. Uh, not password, sorry. Passport. Right. And, uh, yeah, humor. Uh, uh, the NATO game, however. Paul, do you know what NATO is? No. Have, have you ever tried it? So, no, I'm, 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 to be honest, when I, when I listened to Ferdinand's um, audio file that he sent me, it took me a long time for me to actually find... Because, I, I, you know, he said it, Russo de NATO, and I was like... Okay, well, how do you spell that? So I spent a lot of time Googling it to try and find out what this game was. It's called Ideal Nato. It's one of the Japan brand games that is coming oh, okay. over from right. uh, Japan. And Nato is, if you imagine Marmite, mm -hmm. uh, now imagine something that's more Marmite than Marmite, you know? <laughs> okay. It's, it's so divisive. People either really, really love it or really hate it. And I, I can't make my mind up about it because I've tried natto so many times. It's fermented soybeans and they are very icky and glutinous and you put them on rice as a rice topping. And I can see the appeal of it, but this, the, the flavor is so strange. And this is, this is basically a card drafting set collection game, uh, very light, based around making the perfect natto. Okay. So it sounds like it, the theme is sort of tacked on this one. Sushi Go. Okay. So I'm saying. If you only look at two games in Essen this year, let those be Barcelona, The Rose of Fire, city building with a social conscience, and When I Dream, because it has a blindfold. Oh yeah. And if you only listen to one podcast, make it perfect information, better than The Guardian. So yeah, that's it. Don't listen to any other podcast. Stop listening to this one immediately. Uh, delete it from your iTunes list and just listen to the Perfect Information podcast. <laughs> Yes, so... Barcelona is a strange one because it comes from a very strange design group. And, I, I okay, the design group isn't strange. So they're the people who made uh, the War of the Ring oh, board okay. game and Battle of the Five Armies. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But also Francesco Nepitello is the designer of the One Ring role-playing game, which oh, in right. itself is a very unique role-playing game. And now they're coming out with a city-building Euro. Uh, <laughs> which different. is a bit different, but do you know what? Uh, they Their designs are unique enough and interesting enough for me to go and have a look at it. Okay, and when I dream, I did have a look into this. I mean, yeah, it's worth buying just for the blindfold alone, although I'm sure you can buy blindfolds in certain shops in London. You live in London, don't you? So uh, Near it, yeah. Yeah, you could probably buy them. Um, so, yeah, so when I dream... Um, Basically, a one player uh, puts this blindfold on, and so he's the dreamer. He's asleep, and he's not supposed to be able to see what the other the other cards are. Um, then the rest of the people, some of them are like good guys, some of them are bad guys, and one of them is the trickster. And the good guys are trying to give them um, give the blindfolded person clues to get him to guess the right words. The bad guys are trying to uh, steer him away from that, and the trickster is trying to make sure that the the balance is in the middle. It does look interesting if you like that kind of kind of game then you, you, you'll probably like this one um, it's won uh, a few awards in sort of board game designs competitions and most innovative game uh, earlier on this year so uh, yeah uh, if you like the sound of that that's when i dream check that out it's on my list hi paul it's Geraint from going halves on games and if there's one game from essen we're looking forward to as we play a lot of two-player games it's to see what seven wonders dual pantheon brings to the game it looks fantastic and i can't wait to try it there we go. So only one offering in from Grain. Um, and as he said, yeah, they play two-player games a lot. So this this is probably a no-brain. I think if you got Seven Wonders Duel last year and loved it, this this is just a must-buy. I agree. Hi there, I'm Giovanni Spellenbloch on Twitter. The two games I'm looking forward to the most are Terraforming Mars, because it's heaviest and in space, and Railroad Revolution, because it's a train game from Watch Your Game, and I tend to like the stuff a lot. And I'm also looking forward to eating some Bratwurst. 
I really was excited about <laughs> terraforming Mars until I heard that 10% of the cards are take that. And apparently someone said, ah, you can take them out. And the designers went, no, they're pretty integral to the game. And I'm like, oh, okay. Because in my book, a euro, medium to heavy, either no take that at all, or I'm not playing it. Yeah, I'm... I'm I'm in a similar thing, you know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of Take That and I need to look at this game more. It does look really, really nice. I know a lot yeah. of people that are playing it, a yeah. lot of people are saying it's great. Uh, production That's quality good. does look really nice, but yes, I, I've heard that as well. So for me, this is a definite play before I, uh, before I buy, based on, based on that information. Uh, and Railroad Revolution, well... Again, people who follow me know that I do a lot of work for Watch Your Game, so I've been involved in this one. Um, it's interesting because you know I will now not say that any game coming out from Watch Your Game makes it into my top three. And the reason that is they're one of my clients, and I won't say that. But let's go back a few years. Watch Your Game were one of the publishers who I would buy their new game blind without knowing anything about it because they make the games which I absolutely love. So if I was to take my, my working head off for a minute, Railroad Revolution would be in my definite must-haves and I would buy it blind without, um, without even knowing anything about it. Uh, as it was, I, I did work on it, so I'll be coming home with a copy. Um, but yeah, very much looking forward to see the, the finished version of that one. I reviewed their games three years in a row, uh, all the releases, aside from the one that's got my name in the rulebook, and I intend to keep doing so. Hey, Paul, it's Edward and Amanda from Heavy Cardboard. All right, our top two most anticipated games from SNR. Great Western Trail and Railroad Revolution. And for me, Democracy Under Siege and The Arrival. But man, that's tough. So I can talk about Amanda's choices because I've heard of both of those. And they are great choices. <laughs> they are great choices. What about Edward's choices? Well, uh, so uh, the first one is an interesting one. It seems to be, again a print-and-play game that was around for a while and is now getting a proper publishing treatment. Now, okay. this game seems to be reminiscent, once again, of games like Twilight Struggle. Uh, but this one's a two-to-three-player game, I believe, and it's set up to the lead-up of the Second World War, so somewhere from 1933 to 1940, and okay. you play the forces of democracy... Uh, fascism and uh communism effectively i wanted right. to say socialism for some reason and um what you have is kind of a three-way or a two-way if one player is not playing uh twilight struggle experience i heard it's really really long and your first game can take up to six hours so I'm not surprised that's that's up Edwards Alley, <laughs> so, really. Yeah, I mean I, I'm sharing a room with him at Essen, so is is that is that what we're gonna be doing on Thursday night in the hotel room, do you think? I do do not find me on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> and what about the arrival? Uh the arrival is a game called Mordred that was published by uh designed by Martin Wallace a while ago. Like in the eighties. Uh yeah, and this seems to be a re-implementation of it. Paul, you said you've played Mordred. A long, long time ago. It might have even been the first UK Games Expo, or maybe the second one. I remember playing it and thinking, because it had been X number of years since it had originally come out, and they were going to do a, a new version of it, um, you know, a whatever anniversary edition mm -hmm, of it, mm -hmm. and I played it and went, yeah, this is quite old school. It, it, yeah. was, it definitely wasn't my cup of tea, uh, and we got taught most of the rules completely wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. Even though it was at the actual Warfrog Games booth, but never mind. Um, but yeah, it, it seemed very old school. So I'm assuming it's been tweaked, streamlined, and updated for a more absolutely modern... right. Okay. Yeah, and I hear that it's not that heavy, really. Or maybe I'm mistaken, but I got the impression that it's not a very heavy game. Hi, my name is Jamie Maltman from the What Did You Play This Week podcast. If I had to pick just two titles that I'm excited about from Essen Spiel 2016, it would be Great Western Trail from Alexander Pfister and Stronghold Games, and A Feast for Odin from Uwe Rosenberg and Z-Man Games. There we go. Another couple in from that. Not surprising. Great choices, even if we've heard them before. Yes, and we'll probably hear them again. Hi, my name's Jen Freeman, and my two top picks for Essen are Fabled Fruit and Key to the City of London. And I just wanted to say this podcast is amazing. Uh, Jen, your voice sounds strange. What was that? Um, I think I think Jen had a cold. 
Right. That, I think that's what it was. Why because, did that not sound like her? No, I've met Jen a couple of times, uh, <laughs> and yeah, it was a bit different. Yeah, so, so Jen was full of a cold, and I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll record it for you then. So, uh, so Fable Fruit, another one from Stronghold Games. Friedman Fries. Um, Friedman Fries, and yes, so uh, Friedman Fries, designer and co-publishing with, with Stronghold Games, using the Fable system. So forget Legacy, Legacy is so last year, Fabled is going to be the new Legacy. I don't know, let's I see. <laughs> did you hear? Did you hear that thunk when my face planted onto the table? I I don't know. I don't know much about it other than what Stephen told me in the podcast. But the rules of the game change as you go along. So I, I believe you play multiple games, but things oh no, that's change exciting. as you progress. See, yeah. that's exciting. It's the whole fabled game that really right. got me a little. But yeah, <laughs> no, I, I like card game with changing rules. Yeah, yes, I'm up. So and key to the city of London, another another one in for for Richard Breeze's new game. That one's not changing rules, though, is it? No. No. Okay. no. Hi, my name is Jessica Wade, also known as Feld Fangirl on Twitter. And the two games I'm looking most forward to at Essen are Ex Nimit, because I love little card games. And, of course, the Oracles of Delphi, because it's Stefan Feld, and I'm Feld Fangirl. Well, I was really surprised that the first one was not your week. Because I know. You, maybe yeah. you didn't know. No, Maybe. <laughs> But Ex Nimit. Now, I, I've got Six Nimit. That was one of the games which I started playing just before I made the transition into board games back in 97. It was one of those quick, simple card games that was always played, um, you know, down at our local club at the sort of 20 minutes free at the end of the night. So I've got a copy of it. I've got fond memories about it. I think you can win the game by picking your cards completely randomly because I've seen it done. But it's good fun, and it's nice that people are still playing it now. So, Ex Nimit, I hadn't heard about, um, but yeah, that that's coming out. So, um, I'll I'll be I'll be having a look at that one just to see to see what it does different, um, and if it is different enough, then yeah, might pick a copy of that up. Hey there, this is John from John Gets Games, and my two most anticipated games coming out at Essence Spiel this year are Great Western Trail from Alexander Fisher, which is a big, weighty Euro game, as well as Master of Orion, because I am a sucker for multi-use card, hand management, tableau engine building style games. Okay, so John has told us a bit more about Master of Orion than, than we mentioned earlier on. Multi-use yeah. cards. Yeah, well, I did say expect a 51st state kind you of did. experience. You did, okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and another one for Great Western Trail. Indeed. Good choices. Hey gamers, this is Joe from What I'm Playing Now, and a couple of the games that I'm interested in from Spiel 2016 is Tramways from designer Alvin Viard, and Age of Thieves from designer Slavomir Stepian. Wish I was going to the show. Okay, so Tramways. For those people who don't know Alvin Viard's games, he's done Small City, he's done Clinic, he's done a few, I think. You're but a big fan, aren't you? Well, I wouldn't say a big fan. I have respect for Alban because he pretty much co-publishes his games. I mean, he designs them himself mm -hmm. and then he basically sorts out the production himself and all of his games are all sort of centred. They're all connected together. So they're all about city building. Um, you know, in small city, you can build a hospital and apparently the clinic game is set in that hospital, for example. So all <laughs> the games are kind of connected in a way. Um, so it's certainly one that I'm going to look at. And I think in tramways, you're responsible for um, basically building up the tramways around the city. So, yeah, there, there is a connection there between them. Um, but, yeah, I, I've always got something for people who sort of, you know, one-man band, design a game, sort all of the stuff out themselves. It's definitely, definitely ones to look into. And I think that uh, I know a few people that have played Tramways and said it was actually pretty good. So I'm definitely going to have a look at this one uh, myself. And the other one was Age of Thieves, which I have had a look into. Um, I think a couple of people have mentioned it to me because they like the Thief series of computer games. Mm -hmm. So I think that is a... Um, uh, you know, a, a tie-in. If they like that, they'll sort of be looking at this game. Um, I had a look into it. Basically, yeah, each player plays a thief and you've got to go in steal something and then get out of the city um there's various card play in there and yeah if you if you'd liked the thief computer game i think you'd probably certainly like the setting of, of this one hey paul joel Eddie from drive-through review here 
And the top two games I'm looking forward to at Essen are Innis coming from Asmodee and A Feast for Odin coming from Z-Man Games. Okay, thanks. So two things that I've learned from the Shut Up and Sit Down reviews comment section on mm-hmm. Inish. First of all, pronounced Inish. Inish. Uh, yeah. The second thing that I've learned, uh, it, it's a game that has quite stunning artwork, very different, very psychedelic. And do you know why? Well, because I believe the the, uh, the guy who designed it is called Jim Fitzpatrick. I'm not sure if that's his actual name, but that's okay. how I recall it. And he is famous for designing, not designing, but drawing Che. You know, the the... the very iconic image of Che Guevara that you see on all the t-shirts and stuff like that. Yep, so yep. same person did the artwork for both of these things, which wow. just blows my mind. Yeah. The second thing that's cool about it, it's an area control game from Matago. Yeah, the people who made Kemet, yeah, the people who made Cyclades, right? Some of the most innovative kind of dudes on a map, area control game publishers, and it's the next one from them, and it has drafting in it as well. So yeah. I am super excited. I've seen a lot of people talking about this. And as you say, the artwork it, it, its weird because I've seen pictures of the game in progress. And I think, oh, yeah, that looks all right. Mm-hmm. And then I see the box cover and I'm like, somebody's been sick all over it. It's just <laughs> it, it, to say it's not my style. It's, <laughs> that, that's an understatement. But, it's a, it's, you know, don't judge the box by its cover. All oh, of the no. components look completely different art style to what's actually on the front cover. So I love cover the box would, cover. I love, love it. it. Uh, I okay. absolutely love it. And it's so Marmite, right? It is. Hi, this is John from Actual Lull. The top two games I'm most looking forward to are Insider from Oint Games and Dream Home from Asmodee. Check out my top 20 most anticipated games video to find out why. So, two games I've never heard of. Well, uh, before we begin, I'd like to say this. John, I've seen you drunk. Um, <laughs> but but first of all, Insider. So that's that's the next game from Oink Games. And Oink Games have made themselves a name with Fake Artist Goes to New York, which right, is okay. kind of like a drawing variant of Spyfall. I really, really like Fake Artist uh, because the stories you get from that, you keep the pictures that you've drawn as a group. And because it's it's just so ah, uh, we've drew Michael Gove once, and it was just <laughs> spectacular. And uh, I really look, I'm really looking forward to the new game. It's I think it's meant to be a follow up uh, to Fake Artists. I don't think it's a drawing game though. Uh, whereas Dream Home is, seems like a fairly light game where you ba- build your ideal house where you live in. Okay, I mean John does like his fun games. I don't know why we hang around with him, but you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why we hang around with him. <laughs> oh, it's because of his popularity. That's what it is. We're hoping yeah. it will rub off on us eventually. Yeah, or so. we might learn a thing or two about shooting funny videos. This is Keith Shapley. My two games are Chariot Race from Pegasus Spieler, hopefully bringing back memories of Circus Maximus, and The Fog of War from Stronghold Games, because I think the Engelstein podcast is one of the best out there. Okay, so Chariot Race. Re-implementation of Circus Maximus or just same theme? Uh, well, I hear that's the new Matt Leacock game. Right. And it's about chariot racing, and it's a racing game. Okay. And uh, that's not a forbidden chariot racing game, or not Pandemic, the chariot racing. <laughs> it's it's a chariot racing game from Matt Leacock. Okay. I am excited to see what he's cooked up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's exciting to see all the stuff. Um, and another another one in there for, for Fog of War again. Exactly. Hey, 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 it's Berkey from the Berkey and Badger Board Game Babble Show and Board Game Theater. The two games that I'm most excited about getting from Essen is Adrenaline by Czech Games and The Great Western Trail from Stronghold Games. I can't wait to get these games. So Kevin's a fan of Adrenaline, it seems. I have been paying him regular amounts of money into his bank account to say that. No, I haven't really, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm, when I showed it to Kevin, he was like, this is, this is really good and got really excited about it. So um, yeah, it's nice to see that on there and Great Western Trail again as well. So um, yeah, good choices. I can tell you that I'm excited about Adrenaline since I found out it has extra modes, not just deathmatch, but more ways you can play get the game. There is, definitely. Hi, this is Kimberly Bullock, an organizer of the Granite Game Summit. The titles I am most looking forward to from Essen are Rosenberg's Cottage Garden and Feld's Jorvik. Okay, so we talked about Cottage Garden earlier on, but this is the first one we've had in from Jorvik, which 
is a Steffenfeld game, but it's not a new Steffenfeld game. It's a re-implementation of one of his older games, Der Spierstadt. Yes, and it also comes with the expansion for Der Spierstadt, yes. which yes. I hear is really, really hard to find. Yep. So people who want to get the expansion but haven't been able to, they can just get Jorvik, which is re-implemented. Yeah. Now, I don't know if it is literally just that old game with a new theme or if anything's been changed, but my Feld collection is not complete. I am missing, I think, three Feld games, and Die Spierstadt was one of them. So I'm, I'm very likely just to pick this one up. Uh, I mean, I'm probably going to, I'm not going to pick it up just so that I complete my collection. It's, it's highly likely that I'm going to enjoy the game as well. Hi everyone out there, my name is Luke and I run the Broken Meeple podcast. At Essen 2016, I'm going to be checking out Vinos Deluxe and Terraforming Mars without any doubt, as long as they're there of course. Come check me out at Essen, I hope to see you guys there, take care for now. I am surprised how few people are actually talking about Vinos Deluxe, maybe because Vinos was a game already before and this is just like effectively a very swanky reprint with uh, rules changes and additions and various little mini expansions that come from the Kickstarter, but I believe will also be available for retail at Spiel. Yes, I think so as well. I mean, the thing with Vinyos is I'm not classing it as a game that's coming out at Essen like the other ones that have been mentioned, because it was a successful Kickstarter last year. Backers are starting to get their copies now in America, and mm -hmm. people in Europe are going to start to get those copies you know, in the next few weeks. So yes, I believe that there will be some available at Essen, and maybe it's not fair for me to say it maybe shouldn't be classed as an Essen release game. But um, it, it is, uh, and it, it will there, on, and people are looking forward to it. I think it's just because it's been an, it's been known about for a while, you know? Um, yeah. So yeah, th this is the first opportunity really where people are going to be able to buy it, but in my head, I don't class it as an Essen release game. So maybe that's why people haven't mentioned it. But I think people are definitely uh, definitely excited about it. The Kickstarter was really successful. And, you know, I, I'm hearing lots of discussion on, on social media about it, saying that they are, they are looking forward to it. I am really looking forward to it. Hey, everyone, it's Maggie Bot. And the two games I'm most looking forward to are probably Oracle Adelphi from Pegasus Spiel and Tasty Menstrual Games, as well as Ave Roma, which I should be getting my Kickstarter copy any day now. Bye. Yet another hit for Oracle of Delphi? Yeah, Delphi or Delphi. Either. Potato, potato, right? I think it might, because I think Oracle of Delphi sounds better, but I think, having looked into it a little bit yesterday, I think it should be Oracle of Delphi, because Delphi is the way that you say the Greek word Delphi and not Delphi. Well, so, um, you know your ancient Greece better well, than no, I, I do. No, I don't, but, so, but somebody else does, and I ask them. So, uh, yeah, I think Maggie Bot might be right. I think it might be Oracle of Delphi. But Ave Roma. Uh, it's a worker placement game that is slightly asymmetrical, and, okay. and you have workers that have different values on them. So you can spend your one worker on an action that won't get you a lot, or your five worker on an action that you might get a lot out of. But then workers might change hands as well. It's interesting. Okay. It was on Kickstarter. I believe it's having its release at Essen. Right. Hi, everyone. I'm Mandy, the board gaming pinup girl. And my two most anticipated games coming out at Essen are Oracle of Delphi by Stefan Feld and Great Western Trail by Alexander Pfister. And of course, I had to do this because Paul loves my Canadian accent. So that, that's the Oracle of Delphi, which is obviously a different game to the Oracle of Delphi. Um, and Great Western Trail. So yeah, top choices there. This is Jeremy Salinas from Man vs. Meeple, and my top two most anticipated games for Essen 2016 are Great Western Trail and Adrenaline. Okay, so we're starting to get a lot of similarities here. Great Western Trail is definitely appearing on a lot of people's lists. And um, yeah, now I knew that I knew that Jeremy liked the sound of Adrenaline and was very, very keen on it. Um, I didn't realise that it was in his top two most anticipated games that are coming out at Essen. So that's, that's pretty cool. That is really cool. And it's fun to hear people uh, mention the same games over and over again because you kind of have an idea for how many people are actually excited about a certain game. Yeah. Hi. This is Marcus, or at Lord Spludge on Twitter, and the two games I'm looking forward to at Essen are A Feast for Odin and Cottage Garden, because I'm the biggest Uwe fanboy there is. 
So I think if there wasn't any Rosenberg games coming out this year, I don't think Marcus would have recorded anything for us. Because um, yes, he is, he is a big Rosenberg fan, so it, it wasn't surprising that, uh, that those two games were, were, were top on his list. Hi, this is Mark Rivera, otherwise known as Blighty Gamer, and my two choices for Essen 2016 are Days of Ire, Budapest 1956, and another game called War Quest. Thanks a lot. I met David Turchi once again only a couple of days ago. Yep. And we had a good chat about Days of Fire, uh, and he basically said to me that he wa- he really likes playing Twilight Struggle, yes. and his gaming group really likes playing Pandemic. So he wanted to design a game <laughs> where he could play time. Twilight Struggle and Pandemic yep. at the same time. Yep. W- what I hear about it, though, is that it's no less complex than Twilight Struggle. So uh, if- No, it is. Do you think it is? I've heard I, some I, people. I did the I did the video for the game, so I had to learn fully how to play the game mm-hmm. in order to uh, in order to do the video. And yeah, it, I mean, I'm not saying it's. I'm saying it's definitely less complex, but I don't. You know, it's it's been a while since I since I did it. Um, but so it's not I, a gateway I, game like Pandemic, right? It's not a gateway game like Pandemic. It's a, it's definitely a step up from Pandemic. Um, possibly a big step up, but yeah, it's, it's less complex than Twilight Struggle, um, but it's still got teeth to it. it mm-hmm. It's, it's def- definitely not a gateway game, and it's. Uh, I mean, I, you know, when, when David, um, well, both of them actually, David Cheerup and David Turtsey approached me and said, you know, we'd like you to do the sort of video for this game. I was like, well, I'm, I'm actually fully booked at the moment, really busy, probably can't fit this in, but send me the rules and I'll, I'll have a look through it have a look through it and I was I, I, I liked it and I was like I'd like to do a video for this game so I just worked you know evenings and weekends to get it in because I wanted to do it um, because it did it did sound really interesting so Kickstarter campaign went really well um, and that's coming out um, yeah so that, that's another one which uh, is in my should this be on the Essen list but clearly it should be um, and it, it is it, coming it, out at Spiel it is. Yes, yeah. it is. Now, WarQuest is the other one. I've had a quick look into this, and I watched a video uh, um, earlier on with um, Sean from Mr. B Games talking about it. Now, WarQuest, uh, I think it's designed by the same team that designed Age of Empires 3. Um, wow. So, you know, that that's quite a popular game. It's a Glendrover game, like Age of Empires 3. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, the team behind it, I think, but the developers and the artists and everything else, is all the same people that are behind it. Um, I don't quite know how different the game is from Age of Empires 3. That that came out wrong. Sounds like I'm saying it's identical. I don't think it is. What I'm saying is I don't know if there are any similarities, because of what I've seen, it's a big map, it's got lots of figures on it, and straight away you think, well, Age of Empires 3 is a big map with lots of figures on it. I'm sure it's a completely different game, um, but I do need to, to to watch the video a bit more. But yeah, if you're, if you're a fan of Glendrover's games, uh, and certainly Age of Empires 3, then then definitely have a look at WarQuest. My name is Mason Weaver from the What Did You Play This Week podcast. My two most anticipated games from Essence Spiel this year are Uwe Rosenberg's Cottage Garden. I'm also interested in Alexander Pfister's expansion for last year's Oh My Goods, Longsdale and Revolt, which features solo play in a campaign mode. Catch me over on Twitter at Mason A. Weaver. So, Oh My Goods is a mm-hmm. game I have played and still own my copy, even though I thought... This is probably the worst Alexander Fister game I have played. And when I say that, I don't mean it's a bad game. It's just for Alexander Fister. You know, you can't, when you have such great expectations, if something's a yeah. bit off, you're, you're a little bit disappointed, right? Yeah. And the problem with All My Goods was that it didn't quite do what it seemed that it was going to do, which it, it, the engine building bit didn't quite gel at least for me and i know for quite a few other people as well but since then they've released updated rules and i think this expansion maybe will make all my goods into that little card game that everyone will like okay okay and cottage garden we talked about earlier on that's the rosenberg multiplayer patchwork game exactly Hello, this is Matt from Creaking Shelves, and my top two games of Essen are Railroad Revolution from What's Your Game and Adrenaline by Czech Games Edition. 
So Matt's also on the gaming rules payroll with um, with offers of cake for for naming games that I've been involved in. Mm-hmm. No. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, Matt got to play uh, Adrenaline at UK Games Expo, which was an, an early version of it. Um, which is where I played it as well. Which is where you played it. But Matt was very keen on it and wrote a very good review of it afterwards. Um, so he's sort of been following the progress of it and obviously having seen you know, the final graphics and the figures and everything else, he is genuinely genuinely pumped about it, uh, which is cool. Um, and also I know from, from, from gaming with him that he is a fan of Watch Your Game Games. So again, no surprise that, that Railroad Revolution's got onto that list. Hi, my name's Mervyn Lewis from North Wales. Uh, I'm unfortunately, I'm not going to Western this year, but the two of the games I would like very much to see are, uh, or to, to buy uh, are The Great Western Trail and Stefan Feld's Oracles of Delphi. Thank you. Both excellent choices. Yep. So although we can't make it, uh, I think we, we you know, we're, we're agree. I, I'm certainly agreeing with him on uh, on my choices, which is nice. This is Michael Fox from littlemetaldog.com. Two things that I am excited about. Essen 2016, uh, probably the Oh My Goods expansion, Longsdale in Alfur, and uh, who saw the toilet from Japan brand? I heard that right, did I? Yeah, yeah, I did a video about this. It, uh, <laughs> it, it, it's a game that comes in a box that is in the shape of a toilet. Yeah. And it is very uniquely culturally different from what we understand because the premise of the game is that someone soiled the toilet but you must find out who because there's this desperate need for figuring out who is it that soiled the toilet i mean you and me you know living in britain if if we found a soiled toilet we'd just kind of look at it and probably leave it (laughs) but But in japan it's different is it Yes. Nice. And uh, and the Oh My Goods expansion gets gets mentioned again. So, yeah, clearly some love for that game. This is Mike B from the Who Dares Rolls podcast, and my two Essen choices would be Not Alone, Aliens on a Spaceship Mayhem, and who couldn't want something from Japan brand, Who Soiled My Toilet? Toilet soiling, we're all over this. Like, toilet soiling. Okay, so that's... Uh, once that's, again. Uh, once again. <laughs> the return of the poo-poo token. Yes. Okay, so that's the second one in, back to back, for games about toilets from Japan brand. And not alone. What's that then? Uh, we've already talked about this. Did we? Yeah, it's a light, asymmetrical, one versus many card game. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The one that Chris Dickinson mentioned earlier on. Correct. Right. Yes, we did. Okay. Hello, this is Mike from Who, What, Why. And my two most anticipated Essen releases are... Pandemic the Cure, Experimental Meds, and Carcassonne Amazonas. So Mike uh, clearly likes his expansions, if he's looking forward to them. So Pandemic the Cure is a standalone... I mean, I've not played it, so this is more of a question. It's a standalone game, but set in the Pandemic universe? It is uh, the Pandemic Dice game. Right, okay. So this is an expansion to the Pandemic the Dice Pandemic game. Dice game. Right. Yeah. And Carcassonne Amazonas, I don't know if that's a standalone one, but... I knew, I, knew, I knew they kept releasing Carcassonne expansions, but I kind of lost interest after the first couple of years. So uh, I don't know what this brings to the table, but if you are a Carcassonne fan and a collector of Carcassonne games, there's then the new uh, thing there's the you. new Carcassonne yeah. thing for you. There's the new Carcassonne thing for you. Yeah. Hey, this is the Mile High Game Guys. I'm Adrian, and the game I'm looking forward to from Essen is Feast for Odin. What about you, Zach? Oh, the game I'm looking forward to is Raise Your Goblets. How about you, Jeff? I'm looking forward to Roan. And I'm pretty excited about all these games. Bye. 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 So it took me a while to find uh, one of these games because I spent a while looking for Razor Goblets. (laughs) uh, And could not find Razor Goblets anywhere. Um, But then eventually, after, after lots of searching for goblets, I found... Raise your goblets. Correct. Uh, yes, with- <laughs> and it looks really fun. Does you it? Have okay. Actual goblets in the game, and uh, when you start the game, each player will get another player they're trying to assassinate across the table with poison, uh, and you will be putting poison in somebody's tokens. But every so who who you're trying to assassinate, that's public information. So okay. figuring that out is not part of the game. Uh, what you are trying to figure out is what's in everyone's goblets every given turn. And if at any point you have more poison in your goblet than antidote, then you die. 
Oh, okay. So you actually get a, a goblet in the game. Yep, correct. And you put tokens into the goblet. Correct. Okay. And Roan, I've had a quick look into this. It's a two to four player card game set in post-apocalyptic world. Um, I'm sure there's lots and lots of them, and, and, and I know a lot of people are really into the post-apocalyptic theme. Um, so yeah, that the, that is on BGG at the moment. the The artwork looks quite. I mean, I'm a bit of a fan of the post-apocalyptic setting myself as well. Um, so I'm probably going to have a quick look into this one just to see uh, just to see what it offers. Hi there, everybody. My name is Paul, and the game that I'm looking forward to at Essen is Ex Nimit, a follow on to Six Nimit with a few minor rules changes. And the reason I'm looking forward to that is it's a game that begins with X, and I haven't got a game that begins with X. There you go, Paul. You got your answer. It's <laughs> like Six Nimit, that sounded wrong, but with a few minor rules changes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, whether those rule changes are enough. To, uh, to to make me look at it. Well, we, we we shall see. We shall see. But I'm trying to think. Have I got a game in my collection beginning with an X? I don't know whether I XCOM? do. XCOM. I don't have XCOM. All right. No. No. Oh, well. Hi, my name is Nafmi, and the two games I'm looking forward to most are Master of Orion by Hobby World, and Power Grid: The Card Game by 2F Spiele. We mentioned Master of Orion already. We did. We haven't mentioned Power Grid the card game, though, so another game in the Power Grid universe. Yeah. Do we know if this is going to be good, or is it just going to be a... Is it a light, fun game, or is it actually going to be a meaty game? The mystery will be solved in At a Essen. week's time. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Find out more on the Post Essence show, where we talk about all the games we've reviewed, or not reviewed, all the games we talked about here, and how wrong we were, and how much information we gave out that was incorrect. Uh, that's happening next year, right? Yes, next year. That's okay. the one. <laughs> Hello, my name is Annette, and you might know me on social media as Netters Plays. The two games that I'm looking forward to from Essen Spiel is The Oracle of Delphi and Jorvik, simply because they're both from Stefan Feld. Yep, good choices. Stefan Feld strikes again. Yeah, he's everywhere. Hey jerks, this is Nick Mariner from the I Call Yellow blog and Perfect Information Podcast. The two Essen games I'm looking forward to most are Great Western Trail from Alex Pfister, maybe you've heard of him, and Railroad Revolution from the team that made Zeng Wo. Everything What's Your Game puts out is wonderful, and this one looks right on the sixpence. Thanks. And Nick is actually appearing in Railroad Revolution. One of, the, one of the workers in Railroad Revolution is called Nick. Really? Oh, that's it cool. It's not in the rule book, but every time I demo it, I'm going to take... And it's not yellow, it's orange, because there's no yellow workers in the game, but it's near enough. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I've managed to get him into a game. So, that's um, neat. Yeah, that's cool. And another one for Great Western Trail. Good choices. Hi, this is Nicole from the Daily Worker Placement. The two games I'm most excited about coming out of Spiel are Great Western Trail and also the Oh My Goods expansion, uh, both of which I'm looking forward to because they're from Alexander Fister. Okay, so we have an Alexander Fister fan. Definitely, and so am I. Yep, and another one for... The, so that's the third or fourth one for the Oh My Goods expansion, so maybe this is a game I do need to look into, but, uh, you know, like you said earlier on, I heard a number of people saying, oh, well, this is great, and then I heard lots of other people saying, eh, this is not so great. So, yeah, maybe... Maybe with these rules changes you mentioned and the expansion, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take another look at that. This is Patrick Hillier with the What Did You Play This Week podcast. And the two games I'm looking forward to are Power Grid, The Card Game, and Cottage Garden because of that cute little wheelbarrow. Have a great week. Once again, the mystery of Power Grid, The Card Game <laughs> strikes. Yes. More information to be followed. So now, wheelbarrow? Nobody told me there was a wheelbarrow that came with Cottage Garden. It's a cottage garden. Yeah, uh, true. You know, it's like that <laughs> William Carlos Williams poem. Uh, yeah, because I know all about poems, me. Yeah, I'm really educated. Hi, everyone. I'm Paulo from Murado Runs Through, and my top two picks for Essen 2016 are in no particular order. Terraforming Mars, Great Western Trail, The Colonists, Innis, Covert, Clank, The Last Friday, Adrenaline, La Grande No Siesta, and Winner's Circle Reprint. Was that too? I think so. So I need to have a word with Paolo about his counting skills. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I know how hard it is to pick, uh, to pick just two. But the first two that he did mention were Terraforming Mars and Great Western Trail. So um, yeah, we've spoken about them before. 
Hi, I'm Pete from Shades of Board Gaming and I'm looking forward to the Daedalus sentence from Eagle Griffin Games as well as the Colonists from Lookout Games or MyFair Games, your choice. And the next one, please. I am so surprised that no one has mentioned Colonists up till now. So am I, but I only heard about this game on Friday. So a friend of mine who's going with me to Essen, uh, Ben, came around on Friday. We talked about um, what games we were, but we were all looking forward to at Essen. And he got out his bit of paper and he said, the colonists. And I said, you mean colony? And he went, no, the colonists. And I was like, ah, oh, right, let's, let's have a look at it. Started looking about it, getting the bits of information from BGG. And I was like, this sounds exactly like my kind of game. Yeah, so, yeah. but no rule book out yet. No, and, I know. And first time designer. So, and we only saw a prototype. Yeah, people are trepidatious, but I have heard from people who've apparently playtested this game and said it was excellent. Okay. So it's good. if it's going to be out at Essen, then it's definitely one that I need to be... I mean, Ben's, Ben said, I think he, he's going to get it based on just what information he's got about it. And I always say, well, look, always try and play it before you buy it. But... I think he might be heading to that fairly early on the Thursday to try and uh, to try and see it. Look, if the words if the words lookout spiel mean something to you, well, yes, yeah. then yeah, you might want to get this game. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Daedalus sentence. I didn't get a chance to look into this one much, so I've just got it up on BGG now. It's a cooperative escape game, challenging players with limited actions and communication to flee their captors and escape a dangerous and ever changing prison. Sounds a little like Room 25, although I've only played Room 25 once. That was I've never played it. That was semi-cooperative. I think one person was a, was a traitor. Um, but yes, this, this is an Eagle Griffin game thing. I think I remember this being on Kickstarter a while back. Um, but yeah, if you like the sound of that kind of thing, it's a cooperative, futuristic, escaping somewhere. There you go. That's the summary of that one. Hi, this is Marty Connell from Rolling Dice and Taking Names. In no particular order... Adrenaline, published by CGE, Great Western Trail, published by Stronghold Games, and The Order of Delphi, published by Tasty Minstrel Games. That was cheating. Yeah, well, it's Marty. He's allowed three. Okay. <laughs> now, Marty was one three of the people... Three strikes, you're out, right? <laughs> Marty was one of the people who I approached before Origins. I think it was Origins. I get mixed up. Yeah, Origins. And said, look, if you guys want to come over, we've got this new prototype of a CGE game. I'd, I'd like you to play it to see if to see if you like it. Um, and they came over to me like at the end of the show, and they said this was one of the best games we've played over the whole of the weekend. And then they recorded their uh, their podcast afterwards and said this was one of the best games we played. And I was like, oh well, that that, that kind of you know, I was really, I, you know, when I'm demoing games to people, I like it when they like it, and they really liked it. So that was that was really good. So um, and the other two he mentioned. Ones that we've heard a lot of, Great Western Trail and Oracle of Delphi. Hey everybody, Rado here, and when I am running through Essen Spiel this year, it's going to be all about getting key to the city, London, and the Oracle of Delphi, my two absolute must-haves. Um, isn't Rado supposed to pick up the games that his viewers vote on? So if his viewers were really mean... <laughs> <laughs> and deliberately didn't vote on those two. What would what would Rado do? I think he'd pick them up with his own money. I don't yeah. know. I think I think he's going home with those two no matter what, and he'd be crazy if he didn't. And the publishers would be crazy if they didn't give him a copy. Of um, so yes, but yeah, good choices. Uh, good choices there. I mean, I wasn't sure what his top two were going to be. Um, so yeah, that's that's interesting to hear them. Hi, this is Ricky Royal from Box of Delights. Essen 2016 means one thing for me, Sierra Madre and the House of Eklund. And the two games I'm looking forward to are Bios, Genesis and Pax Renaissance. You see, Ricky is a good friend of mine. And it, this, it basically, he's the best example of a friend of mine whose tastes I completely disagree with. Um, I've played a number of Eklund games, can't stand any of them. <laughs> absolutely detest them. Ricky's an absolutely massive fan of them. So uh, Bios Genesis, which to be honest, when I read about it, the theme, I'm like, oh yeah, this does look really interesting. But the mechanics of these games just hit my hit my trigger button for, oh my God, what am I doing? This is the worst game ever. Pax Renaissance, I'm not sure about um, because I've heard that, what was the game last year that he did? Pax uh, Perfuriana? Pax Perfuriana, yeah. yeah. I've heard I might like that one. So maybe I, I just haven't got around to giving it a try, 
But if Bios Genesis is any like any of his other simulation style games, which are, as I say, definitely not for me, then then I'll be giving that one a miss. But he's definitely got his fans, and uh, Ricky's one of them. Hi, I'm Rich from Chance Encounters. We can't wait for Adrenaline. It looks incredible. And Colony, we're big Ted Auspatch fans. So I went up to Chance Encounters last month or the month before, do some demos of uh, Codenames Pictures, yep. and I was talking to them about Adrenaline, and they were like, oh, this is going to be really good for the cafe. And I hadn't actually considered that, but it is, because you know it plays in about an hour, hour and a bit, relatively simple rules, and it's got a theme that would appeal to... Well, you know, non people who who don't normally play board games who go into a board game cafe. So, um, you know, I think Rich was looking at it from from that kind of perspective as well, which was quite cool. If the theme appeals to you, it's instantly engaging. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And instantly giving. Yeah, you know, if you're a non board gamer, you know, if if somebody if somebody game came to me and described a theme to me, I might be interested. But then if somebody starts describing the mechanics then I'm even more interested. But you're, for non-gamers, the theme is what's going to is what can get people in initially. I think you missed um, my insta gib pun there. But I did. Yeah, if you're not a first-person shooter kind of person, you might not know. No. Hi, this is Ryan from the Cardboard Republic, and rather than focus on the new hotness, I picked two games found at Essen that may not make it to the US afterwards without importing them. Those are the worker placement game Ave Roma and the trick-taking tile game Honshu. So we talked about Ave Roma earlier. And Honshu as well. And Honshu. But but Ryan's saying that they might not even make it to America, but I thought Ave Roma you're saying was a was a Kickstarter? I thought it was a Kickstarter. I'm not okay. sure. Maybe I got my wires crossed. Okay. But yeah, we need to look at that. And Honshu was that one you explained was trick taking, trick -taking tile placement. And tile placement mixed together. Yep. Okay. This is Sean from the Dukes of Dice podcast. My most anticipated game coming out of Essen is Feast for Odin from Z-Man Games. This is a brand new Uwe Rosenberg game, one of my favorite designers. It has that medium-heavy Uwe resource management, so I'm very excited. He's very excited. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that, that was his audio file that cut off, not my, not my bad editing. Um, but, yeah, so uh, Sean's only given us one, but it's, it's a big one. It, it's pretty much two, right? What? Because it's so big, it's two games in one? Yeah. Okay, that works. Hi, my name is Simon Neal, and I review games for Counter Magazine. The games I'm most looking forward to at Essen are Terraforming Mars, and also Key to the City London, which I had the opportunity to playtest, and I am excited to see the final version. Yep, so another couple in there from ones we've, uh, we've heard of. It's nice to see that Simon was involved in uh, Key to the City of London because Richard does go to various places in the UK and gets lots of people to, to playtest these games. That's really cool. Hi folks, it's Steve here from Polyhedron Collider and from this year's Essen I'm really looking forward to Adrenaline, the Unreal Tournament first person shooter board game that's also a Euro game. The other game that's caught my eye is Age of Thieves from Galacta. As a fan of the Thief video games I'm really intrigued to see what this game can do. Wow, Adrenaline is getting a lot of attention. It is, and Steve's another one who I showed the game to at uh, UK Games Expo. He played it with the rest of the poly Polyhedron Collider crowd, and uh, yeah, I think they, they, they really enjoyed it as well. Um, definitely appealed to, to them. Um, I mean, Steve normally likes his games with lots and lots of dice and lots of randomness, and we kind of have a joke that if it's got dice and any, uh, any amount of fun in it, then I'm not going to enjoy it, but he is. Um, and Adrenaline hits that sweet spot. Because it doesn't have the dice, it doesn't have the randomness, but it does have that, you know, that that flavour of one of those kind of games. And Age of Thieves gets a second mention, so this is maybe one to to have a look at. A couple of people have mentioned that now. Hi, I'm Sharla, and I'm Justin. I'm most looking forward to the tile placement game Cottage Garden, and it's Stefan Feld's redesigned Jorvik for me. Thanks. Thanks. Cottage Garden, Jorvik, again, both yep. mentioned before, both excellent picks, solid choices. Hi, I'm Kevin. And I'm Melissa, and we're with Tantrum House. And the two games we're really excited about are Adrenaline by CGE, that first-person shooter with the interesting Euro mechanic. And Legendary Inventors by Asmodee. It's a worker placement with a cool theme. Now, I've never heard of Legendary Inventors. I hadn't until this morning, but guess who the designer is? Go on. Same guy who designed Conan. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. I'm not I've saying just... this is another $300 box game with like a billion miniatures. It's not. But mm -hmm. yeah, Fred Henry um, is designed this. So yeah, it's worker placement. And as Melissa said, it does have a cool theme. Uh, you're basically controlling this, this group of inventors trying to bring their knowledge to life by 
creating objects, he said, reading the BGG thing straight from the page. <laughs> Sometimes that's what you have to do as a professional. This is the Angel of Dice, and the two games that I'm looking forward to at Essen are London Dread and Martians, a story of civilization. Finally, something new. London Dread. Two London new choices, Dread. in fact, yeah. Yeah, so uh, you, you're a person who works for CGE, Paul, so this will be familiar to you because London Dread seems to be quite similar to Space Alive. Okay. In terms that it's a cooperative game with a soundtrack, so, you know, real time. Yeah. But uh, the soundtrack is done by an app, and uh, the app provides moody music. Okay. And uh, that's as much as I know about it, but I know that a lot of people are really excited because... The theme integration is quite strong, and you're solving like a murder mystery case in Victorian London. A lot of people like that. I've seen a lot of people talking about this on social media in the last month, maybe. So I'm mm -hmm. surprised nobody else has mentioned this. Yeah, and uh, the other Martian game this year that's not First Martians or Terraforming Mars. Yeah, Martians: A Story was, of Civilization. Yeah, uh, this was a Kickstarter, and I believe it's a mediumish Euro that has a competitive and a co-op variant. Oh, okay. You see, I looked at the board for this, and based on the board, and I've bought games based on the board alone. So, mm -hmm. Pillars of the Earth, bought it because the board looked gorgeous. Turns mm -hmm. out, it's an amazing game. Mm -hmm. Madi Madeira, I saw the board for Madeira and went, I'm going to love this game, and it was my favourite game of 2013. I saw the board for Martians, A Story of Civilization, and said to myself, I think I'm going to like this game. I haven't even looked any more into it, but I'm going to, just based on how, how the board looks. And that's not from a artistic point of view. It's from a... I get an impression of how the game's going to play by seeing spaces with icons and stuff like that. I just kind of, you know, piece it together in my head. Might be completely wrong, but I'm definitely going to look into this one a bit more. Paul? Yes. It sounds like you like board games. Maybe... <laughs> Maybe. But I'm saying I'm not... I mean, I, I am a shallow person, but I'm saying I'm not shallow in that I look and I go, oh, it's got nice artwork, I'm going to buy it. Mm. I look and I'm looking at what's on the board and what's depicted on the board and I get a sort of, you know, a, I get a, an idea about complexity and what you're kind of doing in the game just by, just by looking at the board. It is called Martians, A Story of Civilization. I don't know how at all it's related to Through the Ages, A Story of Civilization. I remember reading somewhere that it's not. Yeah, so why why use the same name? I'm not sure. But yes, I'm cool definitely, definitely going to look into that. Hi, I'm Tom Heath, and this year at Essen, I am most excited about A Feast for Odin and Oracle of Delphi, two new big games from two of my favourite designers. Oh, we haven't heard about these games before. We haven't. <laughs> it's just because uh, Tom's, Tom's later on in alphabetical order, but Tom's actually posted his video uh, on his YouTube channel um, of all the games he's looking forward to. He's done two separate videos, one for his top 10 games, and I think another one for his top 10 expansions. Um, and I just, I just wanted his top two for this. And Tom is going to be over in Essen this year, so we'll... I mean, I, I've chatted with him a couple of times, but uh, we'll, we'll get to meet him, which would be cool. Excellent. Hi, I'm Arthur Boydell. I'm looking forward to Essen because my dad is going to bring me some really awesome stuff back. That was the clip from Tony Boydell, <laughs> none other. So thank you, Tony, for sending me uh, a clip. And basically, Arthur is looking forward to his dad coming home with some new presents. He speaks for all of us. I think so. This is Tony from Board Game Quest. And my top two SN releases for this year are Colony from Bezier Games and Adrenaline from CGE. Adrenaline is definitely highest on my list after trying out Gen Con. Can't wait to play it again. Wow. Yeah, so Tony's another one of the people. He's um, yeah, part of Board Game Quest, and I invited all of them over to, to come and play it, and I think at least two, maybe even three of them from Board Game Quest played it, and I demoed it to them, uh, and they were like, this is really good. And, you know, as they were playing it, and, and they, yeah, they really enjoyed it. So, um, yeah, and another one for Colony. Hi, this is Travis from Low Player Count Podcasts about one and two player board games. And since I can only give you two, I figured I'd give you a one player and a two player. So one player, A Feast for Freaking Odin by Uwe Rosenberg. And for two player, I'm looking at Pax Renaissance from Phil Eklund. Da, 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 Phil Eklund strikes again. <laughs> and no surprise, 
on the feast for Odin because I know Travis is a big um, Fields of Arla fan. So yeah, I was I was expecting that to be on there. And now on to the last one, last but not least. This is the end, almost. Hello, Paul. This is TR Knight. And at Essen, I'm interested in Adrenaline by Czech Games Edition and Sola Fide the Reformation by Stronghold Games. Thanks for asking. There we go. So that, TR Knight finishes us off with Adrenaline and Sola Fide. That was a long list of people talking at us, Paul. That was very, very that long. Was. I don't know how long this podcast is going to be when we edit it all out, but um, it was good fun. And I'm really, really pleased that all these people contacted us because a lot of people are doing their these are my top 10 games and like I said at the start this this is not my top 10 games this is 70 different people sending in their top two games so let's just summarize we've got a lot of Feast for Odin I haven't counted them all but there's a lot there's a I lot I think that's that's one of the higher ranking ones I think there's Feast for Odin Oracle of Delphi Great Western Trail probably the top three Yep. In all of this, yep. with Adrenaline, I actually probably got six or seven mentions in the end, I think. Quite a few, and yeah. uh, some quite a few mentions for Masters of Orion as well. Couple for Masters of Orion, uh, a few for Cottage Garden, a few for Colony. A lot for Cottage Garden. People, people were quite excited about it. Yeah, so what, what is not on the list that you what think should have been on the list? list? The Seventh Continent. Is that actually going to be out at Essen? Well, I'm not sure, but I hear that the Kickstarter is shipping somewhere around this time as well. Yeah, see, maybe that, going back to what I said about Vinyos, maybe that's yeah. why people have backed it, people are getting it. It's not it's... a new game that's coming out at Essen, even though it is, because in people's minds, they've already but, backed it. It's but a this game isn't even a reprint or a remake. This is a and brand I'm... new concept and a really exciting concept. It is. I'm surprised no one's mentioning it. Yeah, well, I, I backed it, and I'm going to be getting my copy, and I'm going to look forward to it, but I wouldn't have put it on my games that are coming out at Essen that I'm looking forward to, because in my mind, it's already come out, even though it hasn't, if you see what I mean. I'm probably talking about Wow, answers. I'm blown away. I'm so <laughs> excited. This is just at the top of my list, right. really. Okay. Um, and who soiled my toilet? Obviously, these, uh, that's probably the, the, the most popular one on this list, certainly. <laughs> no, well, the, the one that I think is missing, and no one mentioned this, Mask of Anubis, because it does use virtual reality to play a board game. I'm Why Why is no one talking about this more? That sounds really cool. Which one's that? Mask of Anubis. Okay. No, I don't know much about this, and it's coming out at Essen? Yeah, it's coming out at Essen. It's from Japan brand. It comes with a Google Cardboard headset that uh, is the Mask of Anubis. And uh, one player will be looking through the virtual reality headset and describing what they see. And what they see is effectively an Egyptian tunnel with lots of different features. Whereas the other players are going to be building the bits of that tunnel uh, based on that player's description. Okay. And so uh, that role rotates and you're trying to kind of connect this uh, tunnel from start to end. It's not a complicated game. And it doesn't sound like it takes the concept of VR and board games and just blows it away, but it's a start and it looks like an interesting start. Okay, excellent. So just before you go, a couple of podcasts ago, I ran a competition, uh, Stronghold Games, for a copy of Fabled Fruit. Um, and basically what I've done is I've, I've put all of the entries into an Excel spreadsheet. Next to each one, I've done a random number generator and then I've sorted them by that random number generator, and now I need you to pick a number from one to 43. So in other words, there is no advantage to when you sent in your entry, early or late, and there's no advantage to where you are in alphabetical order. This list is completely randomly sorted. Efka's now gonna pick a number from one to 43. 21. 21 is S Sparks. Excellent, congratulations to S Sparks. I will, I will be sending S Sparks an email straight after this podcast recording to let them know that they've won a copy of Fabled Fruit from Stronghold Games and we'll work out how we're going to send it to them or if there are going to be an S in there, can, they can pick it up. So thank you very much for joining me on this pre essen show. I will now get to the, uh, to the job of editing it all together and hopefully get it out there before actual Essen starts. It was a lot of fun, Paul. Excellent. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.
Right, thanks everybody. That's all we've got time for on the show. Uh, off to Essen very soon. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks to Games Law, sponsors of the show, and to Jason Shaw at audionautics.com for the music used in this podcast. Take care, and thanks for listening.